Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Just Plain Living. I'm John Gray on a beautiful day. Good morning. It is a beautiful day. Peggy Burton here. And I'm Jim Fuller. It's good to see you guys. It's good to see you, Peggy. When you know, we're talking it, about beautiful, Peggy certainly fits into that so sweet. category. <laughs> Jimmy walked in and Peggy was back in my office when we were talking and he looked at Peggy and said, are you in trouble? And I said, she's above trouble. <laughs> she can't get it. This girl right here can't get in trouble. It's been a while since I, I can handle trouble. I don't care what she does. <laughs> Just forget it. She's worth it. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, my goodness. It, it is a beautiful day. And I'm, I know you guys have got a lot of football to talk about. It, well, it, it has been a big weekend for football, um, really. And it, uh, Good, good game for uh, the Wildcats, the Oklahoma Wildcats. Went to Lawrence were. County, which it's always hard to play there. Yeah. No matter what their record is, but they've been they've been scoring on everybody. Yeah. But we, uh, I think, what was it, thirty five to thirty five to nothing. Yeah. Wow. So. Uh, That's pretty. Which amazing, means, yeah. which means we win. Well, now we're in the playoffs, and the first game is in the uh, is going to come here. But if we win one more game, we have two games to play. Greenbrier will be here this coming Friday, and then we will go to Glencliff, who hasn't won a ball game. We win one of those games, then we will play at home all the way to the state championship game if we keep winning. Well, right. that be like right. exciting. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful and, year and it, for us. You know, it's a cash home. infusion, too, for, yeah. for the program and the city. And you know, which is good because they only had four home games. Only had four home games. And uh, so, you know, 8 and 0 at this point, and with a good chance to win uh, the, other the, two. the other two. So, and it, as far should as they go 10 and 0, then, uh, you know, that, that, that's unbelievable. That, it, it, I think it will be the first time ever. That the Tallahoma Wildcat that football team has had ten. two in a row undefeated seasons, that's regular a, seasons. That's pretty right. amazing. Oh, it is. Of course, what was it? About four years ago, we went two seasons without winning a ball game. And, and those kids grew up and look what. Yeah, they did. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's Help sort of it's sort of like college and well, college. No, you get to recruit college. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's like this. Some high you know, school, you got to grow them. They've got to grow. Well, it depends on who's coming through. You know, you, you have, uh, I remember when I was in school, there were some classes that you just, I, I don't know, I don't want to know how to term it. It's not soft, but, you know, they just, there's good athletes and then there's not good athletes. And every now and then you get an influx of, of good athletes all at the same <coughs> time. But then four years down the road might not be one in sight. Yeah, and this, is, right. this has been an unusual run for Tullahoma, oh, yeah. I think, because, you know, they, they went through so many years that they were, where they were undersized, I think, right. for, for the athlete, high school athletes today. And, uh, uh, you know, that's not the case anymore. Both sides of the line, offense and defense, they got good size. And, we and, have and, some uh, bigs. And, 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 yeah, it's interesting how athletic, that happens. Instead know. of one year, they'll be, it seems like they're all very small. Uh, yeah, right. Well, we're not a we're not a farming, <coughs> coal mining, uh, uh, labor strong, but stout got folk it. kind of a town. We're a we're a highly educated town, and a lot of times those kids are not great big kids; they're small kids, and but they're smart, and they play hard. And and one thing, two things, we're usually smarter coaching wise and player wise than anybody we play. And we're usually in better shape than anybody we play. And our kids, you look at them, when you see them walking down the street, you'll think, well, that can't be him. Because they're, they're not really, except for the line players, not really big. But let me tell you what, John said the weight room, he said this is one of the strongest football teams he's ever had. That's great. And so that you take all work that and hard. put it together. That means they work out and they work hard. Yeah, you take all that and put it together, you got something. Oh, yeah. All right. Then we go from Friday night to Saturday. Yes. And you've got Tennessee playing Ole Miss, coached by Lane Kiffin, who <laughs> everybody in Knoxville hates. He's really a pretty good coach, though. He's a very good coach. Yeah, I think. And, uh, but he left Tennessee after one year. And that's why they hate him. They hate him. We were talking about this earlier, but of course, Lane Kiffin went to Southern Cal, which was his alma mater, and 
you really can't. And a big job. Yeah, and it was a big job, and you really can't. Uh, you you got to try to understand that. Sure. It's hard to understand that if you're a UT fan. Right. But, uh, you know, a, a coach probably most all of them want to coach at their home school. Right. But uh, but anyway, it was a good game, a very close game. Yeah. Tennessee you know, played good football. Tennessee got behind 24, I think, to six or something like that. But 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 come back and. Right. Uh, and it ended up being quite the game. Fans showed out a little bit. Fans at oh, a little did, bit definitely did. showed out. Yeah. Yes, they did. They yeah. showed out. But um, that was a Kiffin got hit with a golf ball. They were throwing stuff out. I don't of think the stands. it hit him, did it? They, well, they said it hit him in the elbow. But yeah, when think. they show the replay, eh. yeah. Okay. Who carries a golf ball to a football? I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Unless you were unless only you, a golfer, I guess. Let's see. That, that whole deal was premeditated, and I, I thought we're we're going to we're going to get Coach Kiffin over here. Uh, with Either golf. way, yeah. win or lose, he's going to get it. Exactly. <laughs> I saw yesterday where the school got fined two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that. Oh, escalate. really? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, well, they. Of course, they can afford it, I guess. But son of a gun, that's it, pretty steep. It, well, it was a bad thing to do. Plus a ticket, that's not that many tickets. Or, or tickets, a hundred bucks now. I so would imagine think. they're at least probably, that. Probably, probably. So. Unbelievable. You know, you have to, you have to be. That tickets up there on their legacy. Yeah. But it makes, them, it makes them look bad when sportsmanship like that oh, shows yeah. up and they're throwing but garbage. But it's not the, it's not the players. It's not the no, players. No. I know that. I know it's not the players. It doesn't yeah. speak well of the fans. <clears throat> yeah, and it's amazing. What, you know, used to when we were going to college games on a regular basis, you weren't allowed to carry alcoholic beverages into the stadium if they, right. if they caught you. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people did. But. Uh, now I think they sell, they sell it. them. They sell beer at uh, at the stadium, even that yeah. might contribute a little bit to the I would think behavior, so. You know, but uh, yeah. but uh, anyway, that's just like that new Blake Shelton song where he says, "I want to come back a country boy. Mm -hmm. If my neck ain't red, Lord, leave me dead." <laughs> that's a good line, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Knoxville, that's you. Right. <laughs> Or not Knoxville, but Tennessee fans. Yeah. Got to have a little bit more class. Than yeah, that. Tennessee plays Alabama this week, so it could be. It, that, that, they tough. probably hate. Well, and that's another reason they hate Kiffin. When he left California, he went to work for Nick Saban, and yeah. he's an offensive genius. Yeah. He is, actually is, yeah. That's just that simple. He's, he's as good an offensive well, so everybody's coach been as sad things, to lose One him. of the things Coach Kiffin did, and I guess maybe Tennessee did to some extent, was was, you know, both uh, Mississippi and Tennessee have these uh, uh, no huddle offense fast, you know, and mm -hmm. they play up tempo football. And, uh, but Coach Kiffin particularly, I thought, figured out, we'll just, we'll designate somebody to get hurt every play. <laughs> that way they'll have to stop play yeah. and that'll slow Tennessee. There were a lot of down. people laying down with cramps. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen so many. Yeah, it was ridiculous. You, you know, and, and I'm, Tennessee might have done it a couple of times, but I mean, it was just like almost every play. Well, and them. you know, one of the things that one of the uh, guys in the box said is, if they're going to continue, if people are going to continue to do this, which they do, when another team gets gets really moving, all of a sudden one of them gets hurt, so it stops the, the momentum. Momentum of the game. He said they need to take that guy, whoever it is, and he doesn't need to be able to come back until the next possession. I agree. Yeah. And that way he's got to sit out, not just because they'll go, oh, they'll be, oh, they hurt. Yeah. They rip off in the next play, they're right back. They're, they're ready yeah. to go back. Right. You know, so. And then we had Sunday football, which the Titans weren't playing. Yeah. We had to wait till Monday night on the Titans. But it was worth the wait. Yeah, it was. That what a ball game last night. How did and that turn out? They they ended up coming from behind. Derrick Henry was the monster that he is. He's an incredible running back. Uh, and we held them on the one yard line with two seconds to go in the ball game. All they had to do was get one yard to score and one foot to get a first down. And our defense held That's great. with two seconds left, or three wow. seconds or something like that. Yeah, 34-31. 34 to 31. Yeah, big win for the Titans. I guess the crowd nope. went wild. They were crazy. Yeah. 
And they said there was nobody left in Buffalo, New York. They said okay. everybody, well, everybody came to Nashville to party. Yeah. Because, you know, Nashville's a destination town as far as, yeah. if you're going to go to yeah. a football game, go, go, go to the to Titans Nashville. game right. and hang out on, on Broadway, particularly on a Monday night, you're there all weekend. They ain't no telling how much money, New York uh, money, right. Nashville New got. New York came yeah. from Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's always a good thing. That's always yeah. a good thing. Yeah. 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 It's always a good thing. Hey, I'm done drinking coffee this morning. Have you got a new cup? Out of a special, it's not a new cup, it's one I've had for a long time. But if you look and see this lovely young lady, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes. And this cup is from Multi-County Cancer Support Network, which is a nonprofit that has been helping cancer patients in, in our area for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I appreciate what they do more than you'll ever know because they keep it local. Yep, pretty everything much. stays here. There's so much money that gets sent out, and it's nice to keep it local to help our own people. Yes. So and it what's, keeps your coffee good, keeps too. Keeps your coffee good, right. <laughs> yeah, and we did a video one time for uh, Harton, I think, that won some kind of big award. Remember several, right. like, several years ago it, uh, about uh, uh, breast cancer awareness. Right. So. <clears throat> and it's uh, it's uh, it's out there, and it's something that a lot of us have to deal with. And people need over to over and over again, like it to, or not. You know, they need to go and get examined, and yeah, every, every yeah. year it's just and, important. Uh, we we just had we just had the ladies from Harton in here what two weeks ago? <laughs> two weeks ago, I think. Uh, yeah, talking about their facilities uh, and how they have new machinery and equipment out there that can can take digital uh, pictures. It's a lot better and, uh, than it used and, to and be. And they're three-dimensional. Three-dimensional three pictures, dimensional yeah. Plan, which apparently was a huge breakthrough yeah, so for that, that's a, that's for a that big kind deal. of thing. Yeah, that's it is. Big deal. I was not a fan of getting that. I don't think it hurts process. anymore like it used no, to. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. They just at lay the you down. At and, the beginning, it, to me, it was terrifying. You know, and that, <laughs> but not Oh, I bet it was. Yeah, you know, I mean. I bet it was. We could make we're a comparison. About, you were yeah. talking about the examination. Yeah, but yeah, you, but, we, you, but now, were, but now it's a lot better. They they reminded me the two ladies we had here from Harton, uh, Vanderbilt Harton, right? Vanderbilt Tallahoma Harton, I think right. that's appropriate now. But uh, they reminded me that men also get breast cancer, right? And uh, you know, of course, not as common as women, but uh, but it is a thing that happens, and so uh, you know. So everybody needs yeah. to get everybody their examinations. Everybody needs to get their breast exam. Right. That's right. Right. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings about a point here. Let me see. What did I do with that? You know, Fuller and I talk about the old days some. And oh, I, the, parts, I, the parts that we can. The parts that we can back yeah. at the Legion and, and all the stuff we did and the fun we had. And I was looking through and I found this thing that I wrote back in 1999. Great. <coughs> the title of it is He's Harmless. He's wild and he's crazy and a little bit hazy because yesterday's party just came to an end. There's people lying all over the floor, most of them he never met before, <laughs> but last night they were all best of friends. He sang and he danced, crooned and romanced the girls right out of their chairs. Too excited to breathe, they swooned at his knees, every young girl's father's nightmare. <laughs> but he's harmless, just a lot of fun. He's harmless, never hurt anyone. When he's around, the party's never done. Don't worry, Dad, put away your gun. He's harmless. The girls all say he's the cat's meow. That little smile makes them scream and shout. Want to be a player? He'll show you how. They think he's the man, and there's no doubt. But he's harmless. Just a lot of fun. He's harmless. Never hurt anyone. When he's around, the party's never done. Don't worry, Dad, you can put away your gun, because he's harmless. harmless. <laughs> <laughs> that part about people laying on the floor, you don't know who that, 
You know, I woke up a lot of time <laughs> when I was single and lived by myself. I'm sure a lot of you guys do. <laughs> and girls. <laughs> and girls. You know, and you think, who are these people? <laughs> who are these people? Why are they here with me? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, last yeah. night you were all best friends. <laughs> best of Never friends seen them before. before. Who, are who invited <laughs> them? <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, what we want you to do is, uh, number one, Greenbrier's coming to Tullahoma this Friday night. Yes. And we need a good bunch of fans in the stands for that. Greenbrier's uh, not won a lot of games, but they, they know how to score points. Right. And uh, it'll be an interesting ball game. And then uh, if we win that one, we will be at home throughout the playoffs as long as we win. Right. Right. Which is outstanding. It is. <coughs> and we should be there for a few weeks anyway. Yeah, we should. We yeah, should. Right. But you never know how it's going to go. No, that's true. It's a whole new season. Right. You know, we mentioned a moment ago they've lost, they've lost one game in the last two years. And uh, that one game was about one point. Yeah, and it was in the quarterfinals. Right. So, with all that said, we're going to take a quick commercial break and be back with today's show. The Bookshelf in Tullahoma is the fundraising arm of the Coffee County Literacy Council. Since 1988, the Literacy Council's goal and purpose has been to support and promote adult basic education in Coffee County. We enable individuals to complete their high school equivalency exam, which helps them get better jobs or continue into higher education. The Bookshelf at 114 Southwest Atlantic Street in Tullahoma is where we sell used books, which are donated to us by the community. Come see us, bring your books to donate, and join us as you find every genre of books that you can imagine. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. I had a knee replacement, so they've got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. The individuals with dementia, those with Parkinson's, those that have maybe mobility issues, need caregivers. Well, those caregivers are 24 hours a day at home, and they never get a rest. And if they have to go to work, they're kind of out of luck. So that's why Trinity came into existence 25 years ago, to allow the caregivers to have a safe center where they could put their loved ones, know they would be well cared for, stimulated, fed good nutritious meals, have activities to their level, and then the caregiver can stop by and pick them up and go on home and have some continuity into their life. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're pleased to have joining us on the set now from the Tullahoma Area Chamber of Commerce. We have uh, 
Paul Nunley, who's the executive director, and Tisha Fritz. And uh, they got some very exciting things coming up this month. Tell us a little bit about that. Grace. We do, we do. So um, it's been an exciting year at TACC because it's our 100th birthday. Unbelievable. And celebrating 100 years. We had a ribbon cutting recently um, and celebrated by unveiling some new scissors. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was a lot of fun. And then on Thursday, October 21st, we want to make sure everyone knows that they're invited to come celebrate with us at our birthday party. Right. And it's going to be at South Jackson Civic Center from 4 to 6 p.m. Unbelievable. And they, you, you guys had to change that, I think, or that got changed. And so pay attention to where that is because that's, that's right. a different location. We did. We mailed out invitations very intentionally um, with the previous location, but so thankful to South Jackson that they welcomed us um, to their beautiful location. And so we're going to be outside, and um, I'm going to let Tisha talk a little bit about the, the plans that we have. Yes, so we were excited to have a new member of ours, Bounds of Fun. They jumped in mm -hmm. um, and helped us with tents, and I've heard um, even some talk of a balloon Arch, so we're looking forward to really decorate, um, you know, and bring the birthday magic alive. And we'll also have food trucks, Crazy Daisies, and the Dinner Bell will both be joining us um, for the public to purchase. Um, but other than that, everything is free. Um, we'll have, you know, little commemorative cookies, mm -hmm. um, you know, with that 100th birthday. So we're really, you know, it's a birthday party, so we're looking forward um, to celebrating. And, that, and that's going to be, what are the hours for that? 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, all right. And uh, have you been scrambling around a little bit to, to get all this together since you had to change locations? Has it been a little challenging for you? <laughs> you know, when you have a wonderful committee in place, like we do, with mm -hmm. your wonderful bride heading that up, Miss Nancy Fuller, we have to give her a shout out because she's do. so amazing. But we have an incredible committee who immediately saw an issue and they took action. And it was just so quick that people saying, oh, I, I secured this, I secured that. And so when we say we couldn't do what we do without our volunteers, mm -hmm. it is very authentic Absolutely. that we could not do what we do without our volunteers. Because we are a two-man team. This is it. <laughs> you are looking at the staff. Is this, this, is, this is the staff, This by is the, way, the staff, of, yes. Of, of the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, so. and so, um, again, we couldn't do it without, without our incredible board and ambassadors. And Nancy serves in both roles, and mm -hmm. so, um, again, we just we appreciate her and have to say a special thank you to Nancy. Yeah, she has. I think she has way too much fun doing it. I'm not sure, but uh, you <laughs> well, know, we're she, glad. she really enjoys it. She well, really enjoys we're it. We're glad. And you guys, you guys have the people used to tell me when I ran a bar and restaurant that I had the best job in the world. But since then, I've been out of that for a few years, and now I'm beginning to think maybe you girls have the best job in the world <laughs> because you you party all the time. There's always an event. <laughs> And uh, it's got to be challenging to you to be able to come up with all, all the things that you guys have to do. You know, what an incredible compliment that you um, only see the, um, the smooth surfaces in, right. in place. Um, but we do. We, we both feel incredibly blessed to serve the community in this role. And uh, we come into no two days are ever the same. And, and I told Tisha that in the interview, and I think that, that I have lived up to that, that no two days are ever the same. Right. But we feel, we feel very fortunate to serve the Tullahoma community. How long have you guys been involved with the Chamber? Well, I started as an ambassador in 2008 mm -hmm. and served as an ambassador and then on the board of directors and the executive board. And when my predecessor, Diane, announced her retirement, right. I threw my name in the hat and decided I wanted to get paid for all that volunteer work I've been doing. <laughs> and so, um, again, was, was very glad that they picked me. Yeah, Tisha, how long have you been? And for me, I have been serving with the Chamber since 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I share the role of Ambassador of the Year with Mr. James Fuller uh, in the year 2013. Mm -hmm. um, and my journey, you know, as an employee of the Chamber um, began about, you know, coming up on three years. So mm -hmm. um, it's been um, a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, like, like Hope, um, you know, when you can turn your um, 
passions and the things that you're serving and volunteering into a career, uh, there's a certain type of magic that happens. Talk, talk a little bit about what the mission of the Chamber of Commerce is. I know, I know a lot of you hear it every day, but, uh, you, you know, and there's a lot of volunteers involved in that organization, okay. but everybody might not really know what the mission of the Tullahoma Chamber is. Well, the mission is to make Tullahoma a desirable place to live, work, and visit. And so, um, you know, we also serve as a welcome mat to the community when someone is looking to move to Tullahoma, they're visiting the area, they may be wanting to open a business, they come see us and they request information about the community. We're actually in the process of our of working on our 2022 Think Tullahoma magazine, which is a very valuable resource of information for those people. Anyone who comes in the office, we make sure they get a copy of the magazine. Um, and then we also you know, try to, to serve um, as an arm to the city with different projects that they have going on and um, attend conferences with them, working very closely with Tom Robinson with the Tullahoma Area Economic Development mm -hmm. Corporation, um, Winston and the city administrator, Jennifer Moody, you know, we, she attends our board meetings. And so again, it's a very close working relationship, uh, but we are a separate entity. And um, one thing that we love to do when we visit the schools and our CEO visits is to ask the kids, who can tell me what the chamber does? Um, <laughs> How do they do them? Oh, <laughs> it is so fun to hear their answers um, because I did not know what the Chamber of Commerce did when, when I graduated high school, you know, yeah. um, unfortunately, but um, I do now, which is important. <laughs> but um, my, our favorite answer to date was a little boy raised his hand so enthusiastically and he said, it's where the mayor lives. <laughs> <laughs> and we told him that he needed to tell the mayor he was past due on his rent. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, we do take those opportunities to educate the, the children in the, in the schools with our CEO. Um, visits and, and again that's another valuable program we have at the chamber is the creating educational opportunities mm -hmm. and the partnerships that are formed with businesses and, and students and so um, Tisha actually has a little Bel Air B and <laughs> so she's getting to see the benefits of the program firsthand mm -hmm. and kind of hearing it from a child's perspective which is important too. We're, we're getting really authentic feedback. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're very plugged in and engaged with the community. <laughs> Bel Air B. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I know you're proud of that. I'm so, very yes. proud. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, you know that's interesting that you said uh, uh, when you graduated from high school, you had no idea what the Chamber of Commerce is, nor did I, and probably most uh, uh, high school seniors, uh, it's maybe some more so now in today's environment than, than in the past, maybe when we graduated, but uh, that's pretty neat that uh, what you guys do and it's extremely important to our community and we get to see that every day. That's why I always admire the job you girls do because uh, it, I can see why it's a, it's, an, it's a new deal every day when you go to work <laughs> because uh, you're always doing so many things. But that's true. The, the, once again, this event is coming up um, Thursday. Thursday, October 21st. Yes, sir. Okay. So we want to, to make a um, sincere invitation yes. to the public to join us, but especially our past presidents. Um, people who have been heavily involved with the Chamber in the past. We want to celebrate this occasion with all of them because um, they were all part of paving the way to where we are today. Right. And so uh, we're already looking forward to the next hundred years. Okay. All right. Hard to believe it's been a hundred years. It is. I've it is. been around for a lot of those actually. <laughs> so anyway. Girls, thank you so much for coming by today. Thank you. And thank you. lots of luck on this. Uh, event coming at third. Do you know if I'm supposed to be there or not? I haven't been told yet, so I just wonder. You know what? You should come. <laughs> yeah, okay. just, just, just to be, be safe. safe. Just yes. to be safe. And you won't want to miss it either. Right. Yeah, exactly. Great exactly. Event. exactly. Thanks again so much for Thank coming you. by. Thank you. Lots of luck with that event. We'll be right back, folks, right after this. I got a tour and I saw all the things and I was so excited about them. And she took me to the movie theater and it had red chairs. This is a done deal <laughs> and I like it. 
We have so many activities here that you just can't keep up with them all. We have exercise, we have coloring, we have crafts. It's uh, charming, it's attractive, it's very comfortable. It was one of the best decisions of my life. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <laughs> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this boy, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Is this the year you want to get fit? If so, check out just some of the things Tullahoma Parks and Rec has to offer. Kickboxing, aerobics, silver sneakers workouts, swim lessons, boot camp, water aerobics, basketball, Zumba, yoga, pickleball, lap swimming, treadmill, karate. Get fit Tullahoma and have some fun with Tullahoma Parks and Rec. I was skeptical about getting the COVID-19 vaccine. There are a lot of opinions being shared. But I had the chance to talk with my doctor about my concerns. He told me the vaccines are backed by decades of research and that the vaccines are proven safe and effective. Now I'm protected and ready to put this pandemic behind us. Join the millions of Tennesseans who have decided to give COVID-19 vaccines a shot. Visit covid19.tn.gov to find an appointment today. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and I was, uh, along with my wife, Fran, we're on, we were honored to be invited to a private showing of Tracy Sugg, and Tracy uh, is a sculptor, an artist, a dancer, a singer, lives over in Wartrace, Tennessee, one of the most talented young women that I've known, and I don't know when, and uh, the first time I saw her, I walked in First Christian Church because my wife drugged me at that point, and uh, that's when I was in a draggable position. And uh, there was a lady standing up in the up on the chancel, and with a lump of clay, and all of a sudden music started playing, and she started working on it. And about 30 minutes later, there was a sculpture of Jesus, the head of Jesus, most incredible thing I've ever seen, and. I became interested in her career at that point. Uh, she and her children wrote, wrote a musical that was performed on South Jackson Civic Center stage. Uh, they're Celtic dancers and singers and players and just a phenomenal family. She invited us to her the opening of her new uh, study in sculpting entitled Lyrical Sculpture. And the reason why is she loves to read, as you look at the, at the video, you'll see antique books everywhere. And she finds inspiration in lyrics. And she did this to, to be a little bit more whimsical than her usual work is. Uh, we were just so proud to be there. I know you'll enjoy this video. And Tracy's explanation of her newest grouping of sculpture. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm in War Trace, Tennessee at the house of artist Tracy Sugg. And today she had an invited opening for some new artwork, uh, a new type of artwork that she's doing. And she's going to explain to us exactly what it is and what got her in the mood to sort of change genres just a little bit. Tracy, what's going on, girl? Well, thank you, John. Um, well, as we've lived here for almost 13 years now, I've done a lot of s monuments for sculptures. I unveiled an eight-foot monument earlier this year and do, uh, as you can tell, a lot of really good tight realistic style, which is something that I enjoy, that um, was inspired by the Beaux-Arts style, you know, from the late 1800s. But also during that time was the Impressionist style that started coming. And there is a Russian sculptor who is a Prince Paul Trebetskoy, and I enjoy looking at his work. And he sculpted from the late 18 to the early 1900s. And it's just a, a bit looser, it's more impressionistic. And so I wanted to debut a series and try that genre and style of sculpting for a while. So I called it my lyrical series. And so the figures um, are a little looser, but then you still focus in on the face and the hands or on an element that brings an important part to that particular sculpture. And I had a lot of fun. So um, I've got those up. We had a great show for um, a preview here for the people that came out this morning. And I'm really excited about doing more of those pieces. Well, you know, they're, they're quite whimsical, some of them, and it just, they're delightful. In that, the, in that they make you just want to sort of smile and, and, and wonder what's going on in the mind of, of that, that subject. Um, how can someone get in touch with you, Tracy? I know that, that you do a lot of work and you travel and you dance and you sing and you do sculpting. Uh, what's your website where people can, can people will people after today be able to look at this on the website? Yes, after today the lyrical series will be available on my website. So it's tracyhsug.com and that's where it's at. You go there and you'll be able to find the tab and the link to this series. And folks, it's beautiful. Every bit of it just almost as beautiful as the artist herself. And what a wonderful, gracious lady to have folks in her home for this uh, pre-opening opening. And uh, it's, we're always glad to see you and your family. And uh, stay well and stay art. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is on the front porch at the entry of the house. And I can't help but show this family portrait that fills the whole entry hall just about from floor to ceiling of the wonderful children that grow and glow at the at the house here and uh, as very talented young folks. Now we're in the entry hall. A beautiful piece there. And then across on the other side, another. Goodness! And you're going to miss her. Which one did you get? Now we're in the library. And we're looking at some beautiful pieces in the library. I covet this library. Absolutely gorgeous room. Absolutely gorgeous work by an incredible artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is in the dining area here, and of course the walls are filled with beautiful portraits and collectibles. And Tracy's an incredible sculpture. And this is another room that's full of beautiful, beautiful sculpture. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are in one of the front rooms of the house where there's some of Tracy's art has been displayed. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here in this home and, and her incredible talent is shown everywhere. This series, and it's called a lyrical art, lyrical sculpturing. Clayton's has been Tullahoma Shoe Store for over 120 years, and Florence Hall continues that tradition today. We're the only shoe store in town that starts with measuring your foot to make sure you get the perfect fit in a quality shoe. That includes narrow through wide widths for men, women, and children. Clayton Shoes, the family shoe store you'll love. My husband was diagnosed with a spinal infection. He lost his ability to swallow and the movement of his legs. I couldn't turn over in bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat. They were just wonderful in the treatment and care they gave my husband. I uh, regained my mobility where I was able to go home. It is miraculous. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. Try to find it. Welcome back. I'm on the set today with Deborah Clark, <coughs> excuse me, and Lisa Caldwell, and we all have allergies. So <laughs> bear with us. You guys are in charge of such a wonderful event. I'm going to let you talk about it. And I, I know your Lord Hill Our Land is your logo. And yes, did y'all come up with that last year? Yes, ma'am. We did. And tell the people a little bit about what what you're doing and what's going on. Well, this started last year. Um, we did a walk um, in August 1st, was our first one. And it's just a community event to bring people together to worship and lift up prayer to our Lord. Um, and you in do it in behalf of the community. Tell me all those, the yes, world really, but it, go it's ahead. It's community. Um, we're going to focus on praying for our city, our county, our nation our oh, and our state mm -hmm. sorry and um, we're just asking all Christians to come it's going to happen on the 23rd at the South Jackson Civic Center at 11 o'clock this year and is there any kind of sign-up process no there's no sign-up process show up just show up and if we're going to be walking a total of 0.6 miles but two-thirds of the event is actually going to happen at South Jackson Civic Center okay um, so if you're unable to walk and you want to participate, just bring a chair sure. and come sit out. We're going to be sitting outside and we're also going to be doing Facebook Live and that link is oh, going good. to be shown um, on a sign at South Jackson and Civic this Center. this is rain or shine. This is rain or shine as of now. Yeah. But, if, but we if, think it's going to shine, yes. don't we? Yes. Okay. The Lord so far is showing us a, a good day. It's going to be in the, in the low 60s, so dress appropriately. Um, and we'll have some water there for people and we're asking people to follow their conscience and, and their beliefs in COVID. You know, we're right. going to be outside, but if, if you, you want to wear, wear a mask, mask, feel free to wear a mask. Social distancing, that's great too, because um, we want to keep everybody safe while we're lifting up to the Lord. But it's very important that we lift prayers up to the Lord. No big event. He doesn't act unless people cry out unless to him. People cry out. And mm -hmm. I liked what you said back when we were talking that this is not a political event. 
This yes. has to do with all people and yes. healing, healing our feelings for each other and for mm -hmm. the nation. And I love the idea. Lisa, have you been involved both years? I have. Um, Deb came to me uh, last year. Um, it, how that whole thing came to happen, Deb, it was at an altar call and she heard the Lord telling her, I want you to be able to uh, do a walk in honor of me and worship me and, and heal our land. And that's how that came to be. And she came to my office because um, I'm the executive director at the Attic Outlet. Shameless plug, put that in there. <laughs> And she asked has connections. Me, that's right. So. And and asked if I would be a part of things. And she told me her idea and I immediately said, Absolutely, I'll be on board with that. So that's great. That's how that started. And so you've advertised it through social media mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. churches. Mm -hmm. And this is not just one church. It's so No, it's all churches. No. All churches are involved. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in a church, you're invited. Oh, you're welcome. invited. Mm -hmm. Anybody everybody, wants everybody's to welcome to this event. The I'm Bible sure. tells us that we're supposed to love one another. And the greatest gift that we can give one another is to pray for one another. I agree with that. And that's a big part of this event is we need to pray for one another. We need to love on one another. No matter what your beliefs are, politically or whatever, we're, we're all in need of prayer and love and lifting up. Our nation is in need. So many people have lost people to COVID oh and, and just other mm -hmm. health issues, even because they were afraid to go to the hospital for COVID. So there's so many health issues out there. There's so many financial needs out there. The kids in the school, just the economy. I mean, just look at the backup that's happening with, with supplies. So things are not going to get better quickly, but they can. They can get better. If we ask the Lord. The mm -hmm. Lord can change things on a dime. I, I think mm -hmm. your statement about loving other people. My motto has always been, I don't have to like what everybody does, but I do have to love them. That's true. And I think that's important. Sometimes it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference that will be in your life if you learn to love people regardless of their actions and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. So right now we have lined up, we're going to have Pastor Tim McKeehee from Grace Baptist Church. He's going to be one of our prayer partners. Um, Pastor Liz Sparkman from Eastside Community Church of the Nazarene. Pastor uh, Marty Nutter and Vicar Nick Whitney from Faith Lutheran. Um, Pastor Sir Serbonia McKee. Cernobia. Cernobia. I knew I would mess that up. Sorry. <laughs> Um, from Mount Zion and Brother Jim Hibbs. They're going to be doing our um, Wonderful. prayers. And then we have uh, Sarah Gammon, Aaron Gregg, Lloyd Smith, Pastor Michael Brown, and Pastor McGee. Cernobia. Uh, Cernobia. Snoopy. For us Snoopy. Tullahoma people, she's right. known as Snoopy. Okay. Yes. She's going to be singing, <laughs> and they all have wonderful voices. They're going to leave Oh, us. I know. They're mm -hmm. fabulous. Uh, Cernobia McGee was a student of mine many years ago, I think. And... Uh, I, I just love what she has done with the music as well as with the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, I'm sorry. Is her quartet going to sing maybe? No, she's going to sing. She's just going to sing acapella, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Uh, she, very, <clears throat> she loves to sing a cappella, and so she'll be singing God Will Take Care of You when she does the closing prayer. Good. Um, that was her choice, um, and I know it'll be wonderful. It she's, will be. She's really it wonderful. Will be. Yeah. So I encourage everybody to bring your chair and, uh, you know, I do walk a mile a day so I, I can walk, uh, but a lot of people can't and that's mm -hmm. okay because they can participate by bringing their chair and mm -hmm. hearing all of the activities that are going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, children are welcome. Children all are welcome. All ages are welcome, obviously. We, yeah, yes. This is a great family event. Now, when you go to City Hall, will something happen at City Hall? Mm -hmm. what's, yeah, what's going to happen is we'll do some praise songs and prayers at the beginning. Then we're going to sing as a group as we go out. And then as we walk in, there'll be prayer prompts that will be posted. But start thinking about it now, what you would pray for. You can pray silently. You can say, pray with a group as we're walking. Pray for our businesses. Pray for our communities. Just anything that the Lord lays upon your heart, pray for as we're walking. Yes. Um, and then when we get to City Hall, there'll be some praises and songs and, and some more prayers. Um, and then we'll turn around and walk back and do individual prayers. And, you know, some groups last year even broke out into small group songs, oh, which okay. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we're asking people if they want to, they can bring um, signs, you know, showing Christ's love that we're praying for you, that we're praying for our city. Um, again, nothing political. 
Um, it's just it's just an event to to worship our Lord, cry out to Him because if we don't cry out to the Lord, He's not going to hear our prayers. He's not going to answer us. Mm -hmm. And this is just an event to do it as a community, even though many people are praying, you know, on their own and through their right. churches. This mm -hmm. is a way to bring community together to to do that. And somehow, I think through the COVID experience we've lost a lot of that community spirit because yeah. people got afraid to get out and afraid mm -hmm. to share with other people. And so I think this is a great way to, you know, fix that and make mm -hmm. it better because mm -hmm. all of us need prayer, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So you all plan to keep this up year after year, I hope. If the Lord, if the Lord puts it on our hearts to do mm -hmm. it and he provides, then this is most definitely. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I ask, do you need sponsors and stuff? And what you need is people to understand what you're doing and appreciate it and be mm -hmm. there, even if they can't be there, to be there in prayer at yes. the same time. Right. I know one of the things when we were pulling everything together to start this process, one particular Bible verse came to mind as the overall theme of what we're, what we're doing, what this is about. Second Chronicles 7.14 if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's how the whole thing came then, about, was based on that verse. It's on the back of your shirt. Yes, it is. It's on the back of your shirt. It's on the back of our shirts. A beautiful verse and uh, one we all need to heed and think about. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate so much what you're doing. It, it seems little in the big picture of what's going on, but really it's big and other things should be trivial. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it so much. Right. Yes, we don't have, um, no, there's no sponsors, there's no profit. These shirts actually will not be on sale um, at the event, um, but um, we sell them ahead of time through okay. the churches that we invite. So we won't have we won't have any shirts available this year, but for next year's, if your church or your individual, you know, you can go to Lord Heal Our Land Facebook page and um, get interested and see when we're going to oh, do it and get in contact good. with us that way, and then we can do shirt orders that way. Because mm -hmm. um, this is this is a budget of two. Um, we don't ask for donations. We don't ask <laughs> no. for charity. You know, we don't we don't ask for anything because we feel like this is you know. For our community, you ask for, for the healing Lord. of our land. We just mm -hmm. ask for you the ask healing for. of the land and and just people to show up and and uh, and that's show this the Saturday. Love. This Saturday, at, yeah. starting mm -hmm. at eleven. Mm -hmm. I don't guess you need to be there much early. Just show oh, up about, about quarter to. Try to you be know. there on time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. get situated and ready to listen. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And you have a wonderful lineup of speakers and singers and whatever. We do. It's going to be a very um, uplifting day. Very, think, we're hoping right. people will come away from this um, feeling like they have been directly in touch with the Lord uh, to hear their prayers. Um, and we're hoping great things come from that. And sometimes we don't know what they are until much later. I think it's so. like a ripple in the stream when mm -hmm. you throw a little pebble and it, it will grow as right. time goes by. And right. maybe it will. I think it's time we have to wrap this up. But uh, Lisa and Deborah, I'm so proud of what you're doing. Well, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank I you very much. I feel it comes from your heart mm -hmm. and that you're sincere. So Saturday, 11 o'clock. Hope to see you all there. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. All right, good job. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the paint. Uh-oh. I just knocked out a tree over. This the paint doctor. I got the color wheel. Now you know what a color wheel is? It is the wheel at the paint works where you pick all your colors to paint your room. It could be a multicolored beard. It could be a underarm fan. You never can tell. One thing we do know is that it's time to paint. You know, you can make your wife very happy if you go to your house and paint some rooms or you paint you paint the outside of the house, the inside of the house. It makes them very, feel very good because you work hard for them and they like that. All women like to see their man sweat, you know? They do, they do. Honeydew is what they do. And you get to do it too. So you go to the paint works at 1960 North Washington Street and you see David David Eikonen over there and he's the real paint doctor. He fix you up 
with color. It's so nice when the color is white. Go to Paintworks today. Martin Senor. See, Martin C. Nor. Right there. Martin C. Nor at, at the Paintworks. Bye, and we see you next time. Oh, I'm burning up. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. And that it's conversations with John and Pat, with John and Pat, with John and Pat. Hello, everyone. I'm John Rickman. And this is Pat Welch, and we are here today for segment 98 of the Conversations with John and Pat. Got a song here, uh, one that was sung many, many years ago. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me home A band of angels coming after me Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Carry me home Tell all my friends I'm coming to Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home That's a sweet old song. You know, in the last three or four segments, we've had you going back to the, the, the good old songs. Well, after so many segments, you know, you think, well, we've done that one. We've done the standbys. It, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's been great. Pat, nobody realizes this, but I've always been interested in history. And I saved this newspaper from Thursday morning, September 3rd, 1964. And John, on the... I've been in your house many times, yeah. and it's neat. It uh, You've got all kinds of historical stuff, but it doesn't look like a hoarder lives there. You, I, you've done well with it. I this. try to keep things orderly so my wife won't get mad at me for being too <laughs> Is that all, Did that come from cluttered. your study? Was it in your study? Yeah, this, you, if you know up there at the top on my shelf in my study, I've got things in uh, plastic bags up there, uh -huh. which is old newspapers. I've got them all. Not old like, lunches, newspapers. <laughs> newspapers. <All right. laughs> Here I am. Let's see. There it is. Uh, that's 19, what did I say, 64? Yeah, that Medicare you think was there forever. It's, it's just got kind of announced on that. Show them this picture a little closer right here, Philip. Uh, there he is. 
that's uh, Philip took a shot of, you know who that is, don't you, Pat? Sergeant York. Sergeant York. Hey, uh, my brother and I, when we were young, we had uh, uh, a record that had Archie Campbell done. The year was 1917, the bloody war was on. The call came out from Washington, we want your native son. The call to arms, the battle cry, the fight for victory was idle chatter to the folks in Pall Mall, Tennessee. The call came out to Alvin York, a mighty mountain man. He said, I will not go to war, he says. It is against God's plan. Although I fear no man on earth, I will obey God's will, because the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. And That's an awesome we, gun. You, well, from memory. Well, fair. And last week we couldn't, we couldn't remember David Hess's name. Well, you go back several years and maybe well that's well anyways <laughs> that's part of the prognosis <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh alvin york was born up near jamestown tennessee at a place called Pall Mall. a few years ago my wife and i uh decided to take off up into there and visit the uh, home of alvin york and we met his son that day and maybe some other relative there in, at the place. But uh, uh, Tennessee was very proud of him because of his heroics in World War I. In World War I, uh, there was an offensive going on and Alvin York with a, uh, several other men were uh, trying to take a machine gun nest. And, uh, uh, and uh, Alvin York, uh, about, they had well, he had, he had captured a German that had shot at him but missed him every time. And they captured him. The guy gave up and captured him. And then they were walking a little forward and using him as a sort of a shield, I guess you might say. They're going to take him in. And, but anyway, a machine gun uh, wiped out six of his men. They all hit the ground. And Alvin York uh, went toward that machine gun nest. and. And uh, I won't go into all the details of what he did, but he killed 25 men, and he took in 119 uh, uh, captured, captured 119 Germans. Well, they thought it was a, almost a division or something. He, he yeah. killed so many that uh, they convinced, and they surrendered because they thought there was a tremendous amount of Yeah, somehow, somehow they Soldiers asked him there. how many uh, did he have, and he said, well, I got a plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the tale goes uh, that uh, he would shoot these Germans, he saw them in a line, and from hunting back in the mountains, he know that if you pick off a, a group of turkeys that's walking in a line, you get the one in the back, they can't hear good, hit the one in the back, next one, the next one, the next one, then the, the front ones don't know what's happening, so he picked off six like that. And when the, when, the, when the Germans did realize what was happening, they threw their arms up and thought it was a whole lot more people than one man. And uh, he walked, uh, he and his, uh, the ones that were left out of his uh, group walked uh, these men back to uh, where they could capture them uh, officially. And, uh, and he was, from that time forward, a hero. Now, not much was made of it back at, at that particular time, but a year or two later, uh, he, 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 his acclaim grew even more. He won the Medal of Honor, of, and, uh, and he was recognized and honored by three other countries, France being one of those countries. I can't remember the other. But he came back to Tennessee he, uh, after the war was fought, and he wanted to settle in where he was raised up. Well, uh, and, and he and wanted to um, let the educational level of, of mm -hmm. the, his, his, not just his family, but everybody in that area there to, to come up. And they, they, they were the state, poor mountain people. Uh, states uh, uh, set up York Institute. That's the right. High school there. And, uh, Several businessmen in Nashville got together and, and uh, helped that get. Uh, you know, use it. Well, those businessmen helped him buy a farm that was closer to the Wolf River, and that's where he was to re uh, live out his uh, rest of his days. Well, he got in some financial difficulties. You know, the later on the the uh, 
depression came about and and he didn't he had got into some fight tax difficulties and this sort of thing but uh and all along he uh he was uh, he, he was a great man although he did have difficulty afterwards and he John, remained very humble the, somebody counseled him when he felt like he had to be a pacifist and could not serve but there was some some verse that somebody gave him that that the, kind of uh, eased his conscience. Render and, unto Caesar what is Caesar's, un, and unto okay. God what is God's. And once he, that, uh, once he soaked that in, then he went on to fight uh, as he did, and he served the country well. Go to that next picture. His faith remained strong his whole life. He yes. was really involved yes. in church when he There's got back he home. There's he and his wife back home after the war. You know, he was a slim, tall scrapping fella they say uh, when he was a uh, this pastor that was played in the movie by Gregory Peck I have that right Donna uh, and uh, is that right Philip Cooper Gary, Gary Cooper, Cooper. Now, Gary um, Cooper played Alvin York but you're talking about the preacher now I think well the preacher was played by Walter Brennan okay and and there, I want to tell you a little story here in Tullahoma. We have a, a guy named Clint Clarno, who is here in town, and he paints. Uh, he's a very good painter. He's a painter. He paints uh, scenes on windows and so forth. But Clint's been around a long time, and Clint, uh, uh, his great granddaddy was Walter Brennan. So and wow. their their child, and you've had him on. Uh, they, he's been on this program before. Uh, his name is uh, Brennan Clarno, and he's named for Walter Brennan, uh, uh, the 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 actor. And he played the preacher in that movie. Played the, that played the preacher yeah. in the movie, and show uh, that next picture of Gary Cooper and Alvin York sitting together talking about the movie. I believe that movie was done in 1941. That was one movie I remember so well that Tommy Allen over there at East yearly showed that to his students. And I'm thinking how how good that was, you mm -hmm. know, to do that. And and if you uh, folks, Memorial Day or any other time, uh, you want to do something that remembers soldiers, go to up to toward Jamestown and and uh, visit. John, I hate that you spent all that money to get up there because this, I believe somebody with the state got a big exhibit there and, and traveled with it and it was out South Jackson for at least a month. And it well, was really, really Pat, interesting. Had a, so does the wall. I mean, here you're right. chastising me for not going, <laughs> for not waiting. I'm not, and the wall well, comes was, around I was, too. I was appealing to your sense of, of uh, <laughs> frugalness. Um, and so I thought you might squirm some, but it didn't. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but it had a a, uh, a miniature display of that of that area of ground yeah. in the in the World War One where he captured all those, and and it really really was interesting. Well, he was a man that was uh, meant for that particular day and time, and he. And he came home and lived a fairly decent life. I think is uh, I think he died at 74, 76. Died at died at age 76. He had a lot of health problems the last 10 years of life, but uh, we are here today to remember Alvin Sergeant York. Yeah, it was a great segment, John, and that was segment 98. We have two more to go before we take a little bit of a break. If you want to hear us a marathon one through 100 get in touch with management. We will hope that we can continue on. Thank you all. <laughs> Talking history about this and that. It's conversations with John and Pat. With John and Pat. With John and Pat. What does caring look like? This is what caring looks like. This is setting an example for others. This is rising to the challenge. This is doing what works. This is doing my part. This is doing your, your part. part. Each of us individually. Acting as one. Keeping your distance, no matter how awkward it may seem. This is wearing a mask. 
over your nose and mouth, like, like we, we are. are. Keeping our distance, each wearing masks. Not under your chin. Not above your head. Not in your hand. But over your nose and mouth. This is listening to the expert. If you'll just wear, wear one, one of, these. of these. Caring makes community. And, and this, this is, is what, what caring, caring looks, looks like. like. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Until COVID-19 is no longer a threat. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. I feel like we're safe at Park View. There's somebody on staff all the time. So if you need help, help us there. We are surrounded with people that are looking after us and, and taking care of us. The staff is wonderful and always available. And we feel so safe and secure here. I feel safe at Park View all the time. How long has it been since you raced a cheetah? Are your tornado creating skills getting rusty? Tired of being the only one in your neighborhood who hasn't built a dinosaur? Sounds like it's time to visit the Hands-On Science Center. The Hands-On Science Center is an indoor science playground. In this museum, please touch is the rule. Join us for weekly science demonstrations on space, lasers, lizards, rocks, and a whole lot more. No two visits are ever the same, so visit often to see our ever-changing exhibits and demonstrations. The Hands-On Science Center, 101 Mitchell Boulevard in Tullahoma. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with one of my favorite buddies that comes by to see us from time to time, Mr. Woody Bedford and, and his partner, Seymour Lynchburg, over there. Going to tell us about, always tells us about all things Lynchburg, and there's always something going on in Moore County and in Lynchburg. Yes, sir, and we've got one of the best things happening coming up that has happened to Lynchburg. 200 years ago, Lynchburg, 100 years, years ago, ago, on 23 October, Lynchburg turns 200 years old. And right behind Lynchburg town is Moore County, celebrating 150. So wow. we're having a biggie this weekend with all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, we're going to close the square about 5 o'clock, uh, and they're going to open the program. Got a cake cutting, uh, 5.30 the games, uh, firemen are going to have corn, the cakewalk, cotton candy, all that good stuff we're going to have. Uh, about 6, there'll be some uh, yesterday's wine, it's going to be playing music, and I've heard them play. It's going to be fun for all. Oh, but I know those boys. I bring, know every one of them. They're good. Bring a chair, and they've got a speaker for a few minutes at the opening, mm -hmm. and they won't tell me who he is or who it is. So that is going to be interesting to find out. I know that the Masons are going to have a table with Masonic history of Lynchburg and Moore County. Uh, I know the Historical Society is going to be there whole bunch and we just gonna have one good time. Now I, I, I think I heard you say something about corn. Firemen. Firemen are cooking corn, roast corn. Corn on a cob. They soak inside it. Inside the shuck. Inside the shuck. They, you know, they, that's they the soak first, it and cook the first it. time I had that. 
was in Lynchburg. And uh, I just went crazy. And just think, have you ever from, the, seen, from that decade, the boys have been practicing. So they've got, if you, they weren't good have before. Have you ever seen a hog that gets in the corn in the corn shed? No, I've seen a horse that got in that, the food That's what I yeah. felt like down there. Yeah. Uh, you know, they have big old pats of real butter that you can just roll that corn in. And then any kind of seasoning that you want to to put on it. It is absolutely one of the greatest things you can have. Them boys do a good job. Yeah, they do. But uh, we're going to have other, there's going to be other foods there. Uh, and like I say, the cake cutting, uh, celebrations being held on the actual day of Lynchburg's anniversary, October 23rd, 1821. Wow. And the county is 1871. Come play with us. We get and, old. Uh, we getting old, aren't we, Woody? <laughs> oh, I done passed that. <laughs> you were there then, weren't you? Yeah. Weren't you there for the first one? Bring a chair. <laughs> <laughs> do you notice I ignored it? <laughs> but but we do. We're gonna have a good time. You, and you've come back to the future. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we're gonna what have else a, is going on? I know we're, that can't be all of it. Oh no, he he's talking because I got it stacked up here. Uh, one more thing, this is the poster for That's the 200th nice. anniversary and uh, 150th anniversary. I think they'll be on sale on the square if you're into history want one of these. These will be on sale uh, as a memento for, for being there for the big event. And one more time, bring a chair and your shoes for, dan for yesterday's wine. Very and, good. And the kid games are going to be fun. And then... The next thing you're talking about is next weekend. What happens next weekend? Ooh. Ooh. It's, yes, yes. Halloween in a holler. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Halloween in a holler, we're doing it upright. They start with uh, about 5 o'clock. Uh, trunk of treats over at the elementary school. The sheriff is closing off the road over the hill to the square. Uh, he decided that kids and cars don't mix. Right. Hey. Smart guy. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, I kind of appreciate it. Uh, the firemen are cooking chili this time. This weekend they're cooking corn. Next weekend they're cooking chili. Uh, they're going to have a, and it's always good. Oh, and they're, gonna, they're good. bringing the pots down to the square so there'll be food on the square. There'll be untold amounts of candy on the square. We've got vendors that are going to be around the courthouse. Now, I say vendors. There's one major requirement for vendors. Free. Can't sell anything. This is Halloween. You cannot sell anything. It's you can give free. it away. You can talk about it, but you can't sell it. It's free. And uh, you're going to have the Monster, Mance, Monster Mash Dance Contest. How much toilet paper can you wrap around somebody in a time? So the monster, I'm sorry, the monster mass dance contest <laughs> and the mummy wrapping contest. I got ahead mummy of myself. Rapping. The mummy wrapping. How much toilet paper can you wrap around somebody at high quick? You think that you think that guy right over your shoulder is going to be there? Oh, guaranteed. Huh? Guaranteed. He will be. Won't yeah, he? guaranteed. All yeah. right. We we'll be there ready to go. Me and my partner both. Hey, look behind. Yeah. Look 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 what's over your shoulder though. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be there. Well, they'll all be there. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. Uh, costume contest. That's always fun to oh. see how creative people can be. I like. Uh, they had the wagon with the with the child sitting in the mouse trap. Uh, and it really didn't work, but uh, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I put that in. And uh, and my favorite in this day and time, that's not, that's <laughs> my favorite was the hen lady dressed up in a chicken outfit, had her twin daughters in baby chicken outfits in a little wagon. Oh, uh, it was just precious. And some of the dinosaurs that showed up, uh, the cast of Steampunk showed up. In fact, they won last year. Now, the coup de grace of all of this, if you will, the headless horseman is yeah, making an appearance. In the holler. The, the headless, headless horseman, horseman in the holler. Oh, man. Uh, going to make, we try for three. Gonna you don't make think at he least lost two. his head over a little bit of that product, do you? 
I, I'm, I'm not allowed to tell what I <laughs> I'm not allowed to tell what I supplied what it with. You know. <laughs> Can't tell but, which everything you know, can you? But the, the headless horseman is going to show up at least twice, uh, and That's it's outstanding. We kind of give a little warning so the square spreads out, spreads out a little bit. People spread out a little bit because Halloween is wall to wall on the square. Right. And I think one thing that that we found, I know a lot of grandparents are getting their grandchildren to come there. Lynchburg has a safe reputation. And you don't have to go door to door trick or treating. It's all right there, from the, from the elementary school to the square. It's right there. Uh, I know one business gave four hundred dollars worth of candy away last year. Right. Uh, your firemen are going to be back with the chili. Right. Uh, one of the the local churches had a small gas fire pit. They were making s'mores last year. Uh, Outstanding. The high school had a, a their football traveling bus is a haunted house, so it's it's hometown. It's a lot of fun. It's family fun. Family fun. Family Old, fun. Fort County, Lynchburg, yeah. Tennessee. Uh, and I'm gonna go. Holler. I'm gonna go over them all uh, on Facebook. Lynchburg Bicentennial. Uh, Metro Lynchburg, Moore County Chamber of Commerce. Halloween in the holler. Uh, that's where the information is at for all of this. Lynchburg Bicentennial, Halloween in the holler on Facebook. If you don't do Facebook, Metro Lynchburg Moore County Chamber of Commerce will have some of the stuff on it. I'll I tell you what, we're going to let you get out of here because it sounds like to me you got a lot of work to do. I got a nap to take I'm bit, I, after this. Woody Bedford, <laughs> our buddy telling us all things. Moore County and Lynchburg. Woody, thanks for being with us. Buddy. Oh, it is so, our pleasure and honor and always enjoy. Always have a good time yes, sir. with Woody and see more when they come to see us, letting us know what's happening in Lynchburg. We'll be right back after these messages. Partners for Healing provides medical care to the working uninsured of Coffee, Franklin, and Moore Counties. We are in Tullahoma from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursdays, and in Manchester on Fridays from 8 to 12. We provide primary medical care and offer an in-house disease management program. My name is Rosie Mitchell, and I would just like to say I am blessed to have partners in my life. Please call 455-5014 for more information. Thank you for being one of our Partners for Healing. Hello, this is Janie Price. When my husband Ray Price would tour across the country, his favorite place to dine was Cracker Barrel Old Country Store locations. His favorite thing to order was the Uncle Herschel. And the beauty of it all is forever, you'll be holding me too. I miss Ray dearly, and I'm so proud that his last album, Beauty Is, the final session, is available at his favorite restaurant. A love affair. The project includes a duet with Martina McBride and harmony vocals from Vince Gill. Ray believed this to be the best recording he had ever made. Oh, I wish I was 18 again. I think you'll agree when you pick up your copy of Beauty Is the Final Sessions at a Cracker Barrel Old Country Store location near you or at crackerbarrel.com. <laughs> first fast and free with your news leader on six every tuesday thursday and saturday nights at 6 8 and 10 p.m local weather sports community calendar events and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and news makers as only a video news broadcast can do get it first fast and free with news leader on channel six your local information network All right, Peggy, we had a show full today, yeah, we had honey. Yeah, a lot of good people here. 
A lot of happening. good people. Yeah. A lot of great things going on in this great little town we live in. Well, we got Sound of Music coming up next at South Jackson Civic Center. When is that? Well, I'm sorry you asked. Wait, 7th is Sunday, 6th, 5th. Okay. Uh, 5, 6, 7. Starts on the 5th and it goes two weekends. Okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday matinee. I've got my so ticket. So 7, yeah. 6, 5, 14, and 13, whatever 12. The next, <laughs> whatever the next week. And they have been diligently <laughs> working, row. right. Lot yeah, of them. and I'm sure that'll be wonderful. Uh, uh, Maria is uh, Samantha Terrell Waters, and uh, I don't know all the characters, so I shouldn't have started naming them, but Alexa Thompson, who's one of right. my students, is Liesl, and lots of great people on stage. That'll be, that'll be great. Who is uh, the, the captain? I'm sorry you asked. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't well, think of the name right now. You go find out. The only way to find out is go right. see it. Well, go, go, go on face, Facebook or the web, southjackson.org, yeah, and get you your go. tickets. You I find it out. ordered tickets yesterday, and... Uh, Tickets are wide yeah. open right now, so. And don't forget, order. this Friday night, Greenbrier comes to Tullahoma to play the Wildcats. And with a win, that means we will have home field advantage all the way to the championship game That'd if we great. keep on winning. I know. I think that is wonderful. That's a great outstanding. Bunch of, great bunch of boys and great Cats. coaching. Great coaching. And Proud of John Oliver yeah. and his staff and, and all the people who make that. There is an unbelievable amount of people who make all of that happen. Right unbelievable amount of people so uh we're mighty proud of our wildcats and, and our young people we in our town the ones that are on stage the ones that are, the on, ones the are on the field the ones that ones are ones playing instruments at the halftime and you know just so fabulous, many so yeah. many folks come together in this wonderful little town to make it a beautiful place to be on in the fall absolutely gorgeous it is pretty here we'll see you it's, next time thanks for watching